you have steering radius issues on your Ranger 1000? Well, Super ATV has the fix, and today we're going to show you how to install our Ride System Rear Steer. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the rear wheels and tires. Then we'll just go ahead and remove our cotter pin, and we can go ahead and get a 27 millimeter socket and remove our axle nut. Make sure we get our washers. And we can get a 15 millimeter wrench. Come in here and remove our brake caliper hardware. We'll just slide our caliper off the rotor and we'll go through and we'll start removing all of our brake line hardware. We've obviously had our arms off of this machine before, so we may have different hardware than you may have. That's fine, just remove any hardware securing the brake line to the Aon. Then we'll go ahead and we'll remove our hub. Set it aside. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect our upper A-arm hardware. As well as our lower A-arm hardware. One trick here, I always like to remove the nut with the impact. So instead of having the impact on the head of the bolt, put a wrench on the head of the bolt and then your socket on the nut. And we'll go ahead and remove our nut off of our shock bolt. And our sway bar link. Then we're just going to go ahead, remove our shock bolt, pick up, and we'll get our bushing off of our sway bar here. Sometimes they may be a little bit tight. If they are, then you'll have to go to the opposite side and remove the sway bar as well. Just like that. Come up here. This one's extra tight, we're going to have to pry it off. Then we can just grab our sway bar, pick up on it, get it out of the way. And we can allow, it's going to allow our suspension to drop all the way out. We'll go ahead and pull our upper A-arm bolt out. That secures it to the knuckle. Let it come down like that. Flip our caliper up into a good position where it's out of the way. Remove our lower bolt, remove the knuckle, slide our hardware back through, pick up on your upper A-arm, get everything pulled up and you can just grab a hold of the axle, pull it right out, we'll set it aside, then what we'll do is we'll continue to go through, remove our hardware, remove our, all of our A-arm bolts, get our A-arms removed. Next, we're gonna go ahead and tie our shock up out of the way, just to make it a little bit easier for us to get to our A-arm bolts with our impact. Just pick up on the A-arm, shock up, go around the coil spring. Then we can just slide right in here with our impact. So now that all of our A-arm hardware is loosened, all the nuts are removed, we will go ahead and remove the A-arms from the machine. Go ahead and cut our strap loose here. Move the upper arm. Now just repeat all the same steps for the opposite side. So once you have everything tore down, we're going to start pressing our ball joints in to our lower A-arm as well as our knuckle. So we'll take our ball joint, install it just like this so that the stud is facing downward. And we're just going to go ahead and press it right into the arm. Just like 
that. So once you have it installed, it should look just like this so that your stud is facing away from your shock mount as well as your sway bar mount. So then we'll just take our snap ring, slide it on, make sure we get it seated down in the groove. You may have to take a flathead screwdriver and just give it a quick tap, just like that, and then look around all the way, make sure we have good engagement, and we do. So now we're gonna be gluing our boot on. So next we're gonna take our glue, thread it in until it pops the seal. Then we're just going to put a good amount of glue all the way around where our ball joint boot is going to lay. So make sure you get a good even coat. And this dries pretty fast, so you want to really work it in there. Slide it over the stud. Make sure you're wearing latex gloves, because if you get this on your skin, it does not want to come off. Unfortunately, I know from experience. Make sure you got it good and sealed all the way around. We're good and sealed up there. So we'll just hurry up and we'll wipe any excess off. Just like that. Then you'll just repeat the same step for your opposite side low ray on. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove our wheel bearing from our factory bearing carrier. One knuckle. So we'll remove our snap ring. And you want to find something that you can press your bearing through. This cutout on our plate here is perfect for a wheel bearing. We just have to make sure that we get it centered up perfectly. And we'll know once we get close if it's perfect or not. We'll find something that sits on the inner race. And then I like to take a piece of steel or something that we can press with. Just slide this in here like this. Make sure everything's good and centered up, and then we're just going to start pressing our bearing out. So then you just want to make sure that you catch your wheel bearing when it comes out. You don't want it to fall, bust it, tear it up. You want to feel it. If it's worn out, you might as well go ahead and upgrade. You can purchase bearings from SuperATV.com. So since we're already at the press, we'll go ahead, get our factory bearing carrier knuckle out of the way. We'll grab our new Super ATV one. One thing you wanna double check before you install a bearing, you wanna make sure that you get it good and clean in here. From time to time, there can be just a little bit of powder coat in here and that will hang the bearing up. So just take a piece of sandpaper, make sure it's good and clean, and then you're ready to install your bearing. So we have our new bearing carrier or knuckle here, whatever you like to call it, set up. We got our new bearing. I'm just gonna go ahead, get the bearing kind of, you know, started straight, make sure everything's good here. Get it moved around wherever we see is best, make sure it's flat. And I like to get a piece that fits down onto the bearing itself. We'll just stack a few here where we have more area to press. this in here as well and then we'll just start pressing this in we want to watch it and make sure it goes in straight and once we get it down this far we will have to change our setup a little bit Put the smaller one down and then again we can stack a couple pieces here just to give us a little bit more room to press. And we'll just press it down all the way until our snap ring groove is visible. Ours looks good. And again we got a little bit of powder coat there in our groove so we're going to take a pick and clean it out real quick. As you can see, we just had a little bit of excess of powder. We'll just get it kind of cleaned out. Comes out fairly easy. And we'll put our snap ring back in. Just 
Sometimes they may not want to fully seat initially. You can just take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of tap them down until they make it into the groove. So now that our snap ring is fully seated, we're going to go ahead and press in our ball joint into our knuckle here. We want to make sure that the ball joint goes in just like this so that the stud faces away from the center. And for this step here, you will have to utilize a standard style hand ball joint press. You can pick one of these up at pretty much any automotive store. A lot of them will allow you to borrow them or rent them. Pretty common tool here. So we'll just want to make sure we get everything started good and straight here. Once you have your press tools on, just want to find something that the ball joint can press through and then something that's going to sit on the outer lip of the ball joint just like we have here. Make sure it's good and straight. And what we'll want to do is take an impact and we'll just want to zip this ball joint in. We'll just take our snap ring, make sure we get it lined up in the groove. Same thing here, you may just have to take a flathead screwdriver, kind of push on it a little bit. Make sure that we get it all the way seated into the snap ring groove. Have to give it just a couple little taps. So now that we have our snap ring fully seated, we're going to go ahead and put our ball joint boots on. Just go ahead and start it onto the stud. All right, so once you have it started onto your stud, you can go ahead and take your glue and just go all the way around where your ball joint boot. Whenever you're using this glue, you definitely want to make sure that you have a pair of gloves on. And any excess you have, I just want to wipe it off. Kind of smear it around a little bit on the boot. We'll just grab a rag. Just right, wipe the rest of the way off. Then just repeat the steps for your opposite side knuckle. So now we're going to go ahead and install our bushings into our A-arms. We went ahead and just reused our bushings that came out of our factory A-arms. It's completely acceptable. So we'll just go ahead and get our bushing lined up, then give it a couple taps. Get it tapped in there. You can take a socket. Make sure you get it fully seated. That one's fully seated there. Flip it over. Make sure we get it good and started straight. Take a socket. Put it in there, we'll take our sleeve. Make sure we get it fully seated as well. We'll take our wear plates. Right in place, like that, for both sides. So now you just want to repeat the steps, put the rest of your bushings into your A-arms, and you want to make sure that you put the 90 degree zerks on your lower A-arm, and your straight zerks on your upper A-arm. So now that we have our bearings and ball joints installed, we're ready to get our A-arms installed to the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the passenger side upper A-arm. 
Now we know this is the passenger side because of our brake line here. You see our holes are facing towards the rear. We're gonna slide it through the shock. Make sure that our brake line is up on top of the A-arm, just like so. We'll just make sure that we get everything lined up. We'll just work them in the position here. We wanna make sure on our upper and lower rearmost bolts that the threads are facing out towards the rear of the machine. Just like that right there. So once we have our upper A-arm installed, we're gonna go ahead and get a ratchet strap or a strap of some sort and tie it up out of the way along with the shock. This is gonna, be, this is gonna make it easier for installing the lower A-arm as well as our axle. Again, making sure that our threads are facing out towards the rear on our rearmost arms. Just let that arm hang, just like that. We're not gonna put any nuts on anything yet. We're not gonna tighten anything up at all yet. So the next thing we'll do is go ahead and grab our axle. As always, I like to make sure that my C-clip, the opening is facing downward. This makes it go into your differential or transmission, whatever you're working on. And we'll get it lined up in the splines. Plunge it out. Just like that. All right, so this next part, this can be just a little bit tricky, but if you follow our lead, it shouldn't be too bad. We wanna make sure we get our axle in here, into our knuckle. Then we wanna line our knuckle up with our ball joint, just like this right here. And then we'll get one of our pinch bolts that are included in the kit. Make sure everything's lined up. You may have to pick up on the ball joint a little bit, move it around until everything gets lined up properly. We're just gonna help it a little bit. All right. Now what we can do is just kind of put our knee here just to support the suspension. And we'll go ahead and cut our strap loose. That's gonna let our A-arm come down as well as our shock. And we're just gonna take our upper ball joint. Get it lined up. And sometimes you may have to kind of move your ball joint stud around just a little bit. Got a way to line up. So once we have it lined up, just tap it the rest of the way down to where our hole's lined up, and then we can take our pinch bolt, as long as our hole's good and lined up, and slide it straight through. Again, you may have to give it a little bit of a tap. Just like that. And go ahead and get our nut started on these bolts. Then we're just gonna make sure that our shock's lined up in our A-arm. Sometimes you can take a screwdriver or something just to line your hole up. When installing your shock bolt, you wanna make sure that the threads are facing towards the rear. Otherwise, it may make contact with your axle. So we'll go ahead and put our nut on here. Then we're gonna grab our hub Go ahead and slide it onto the splines of the axle. Get it lined up. We'll make sure that we reinstall our washers as well as our castle nut. Now you're just gonna repeat all of these steps for the opposite side. So next we're gonna grab our cylinder brackets. You're gonna have a driver's side, which will look just like this and then a passenger side that'll have the hole up here on the top. So we'll just slide them onto the A-arm bolts one at a time, and we'll take our nuts for our A-arm hardware and just get them started. We're not gonna fully tighten anything yet.
So it should look just like this. So then we'll go ahead and we'll take our cylinder. We're gonna slide it right into position here. We wanna make sure that our fittings for our hoses are sticking straight up. And then we're only gonna start two of our bolts. And that'll be the lowest of the two bolts. So this one right here. We'll run it all the way across. Make sure it lines up with your opposite side hole. Just like that. And then the rearmost hole. Same thing. Run it all the way across. Make sure it gets lined up with the hole. And then the rest of the three, we're gonna leave open for just a second until we get our plate installed here. Just gonna slide it right into position where it lines up. With all three of these holes. Once you got it lined up with one, I usually like to go ahead get a bolt through. Once you have all your bolts started through, let's go through. Fully tighten your hardware. Just want to use the M10 nuts provided. So the next step is gonna to be to install your tie rod. You wanna make sure that you use some 242 blue Loctite. We'll just make sure we get a good even coat on the threads here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you install your inner ball and socket into the threaded portion on your cylinder. I like to just thread it in by hand as tight as I can get it, and then we would tighten it up. So once you have the inner ball and socket installed into the cylinder, you would wanna go ahead and attach your tie rod to it. And then you would want to thread in your heim joint to your tie rod. Once you have your assembly set up just like this with your jam nuts loose, you'd want to take your misalignment bushings, get them installed into the upper and lower portion of your heim joint or tie rod end. Get it all lined up. Then you would take your hardware and install it just like that. And go ahead and get your nut, get it started. Then you repeat these same steps for the opposite side. So next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our sway bar links and get them installed into our new A-arms. This is a lot easier if you can do it simultaneously from side to side. If you do it just perfectly, a lot of times you can get them installed one side at a time. Just like this right here. So I like to just kind of work it whichever way it goes together the easiest. And again, you want to do these simultaneously if possible. If not, you just have to work from side to side. We've already got our other side attached. So we'll just go ahead and get our nut on. Just like this. As long as you can get your hardware started on both sides, typically you can get them all tightened up, no big deal. The next step is gonna to be to flip your calipers from side to side. So what you wanna do, get your brake line off of here. If you can get it to sit up somewhere high, that way you don't leak a bunch of fluid out usually good so this is our passenger side we're gonna walk over here to the drivers and as you can see our caliper has fluid in it but if we leave it sitting just like this we won't have any leakage so we'll hold it up here Set this caliper down One thing I do like to do whenever I'm swapping calipers from side to side, so that 
that's up there. So we're gonna go ahead and take this caliper. And we're just gonna go ahead and act like we're gonna go ahead and mount it. So we have our hardware here, just OE hardware, nothing's changed there. It is gonna make a little bit of a mess, but it makes it nice for knowing exactly where you need to put your brake line. So we're just gonna start it in there, just like that, just as you would if you were going to mount it. And as you can see here, our brake line will lay really nicely. So we have a hole there and then a hole there. So that'll be perfectly fine for us. I don't see anything wrong at all with that. I'm just gonna pull this off here just so I can get it tightened up a little bit faster. We know where it wanted, where we needed to have it, right there. So that caliper is good to go. We'll just go ahead and stick it right back up where it was. And then you just repeat the same steps for the opposite side. Now that you have your calipers flipped so that your bleed ear valve is facing towards the top, just like ours are, you'll go ahead install the calipers and you will utilize your factory hardware for this once you have your brake caliper hardware installed just go ahead and fully tighten it and then repeat the steps for the opposite side caliper so for this next step you would want to remove the side panel but if you have nerf bars installed you'd obviously have to drop your skid plate down remove the nerf bars and then you could remove your side panel remove these panels by removing the following hardware Remove the center console by removing the following hardware. So for the next step, you're gonna to have to be doing some drilling. In order to do that, you're gonna to have to construct your brackets here. We're gonna take pump mount two, and we're gonna go ahead and install our Allen headed hardware to both of the outside holes, just like this. Then we're gonna join it to pump mount one, just like so. We'll grab our final Allen headed screw, put it in there, and then we'll go ahead and we're going to tighten up the hardware here. Then you're going to want to remove these three screws. Then we're going to take our pump mount assembly, then we'll take the screws that we just previously removed, put them back through pump mount two. this and we'll go ahead and we'll fully tighten them then we're going to take a paint marker we're going to go through each of these holes and mark the plastic then we'll remove our bracket and we'll drill all three of the holes that we marked to at least nine millimeters so now that we have all three of our holes drilled we're gonna measure up nine and a half inches from the floorboard. Then we're gonna measure three and a half inches over from this rear firewall panel here. Then we're gonna drill an inch and three quarter hole using the hole saw. So we went ahead and removed our bracket from the machine. We grabbed our solenoid as well as our motor. We got our hardware here. So we're gonna get our M5 hardware. It'll be two M5 bolts and two M5 nuts. We're gonna lay our solenoid on the bracket just like this, flip it up on its side, and slide our hardware through from the bottom. And we can flip it back over, get our nuts started. We'll do this from both sides. And 
we'll just go ahead and fully tighten the hardware. So it should look just like this once you have it mounted. So next we're gonna set our motor down with the threads facing up. And we'll take our mount, sit it down to where it lines up with the threads. And we'll take a flat washer, install it to our bolt, and then a lock washer. So we'll just go ahead and get it started into the motor through the bracket. Do the same thing with the other hardware. Then we're going to grab one of the provided grommets in the kit and slide it into this hole right here. So it should look just like this. Then wire your connections just like this. So now that we have all our connections made, we're ready to mount our motor as well as solenoid back to the machine. So we drilled our three holes through the, through the firewall here. We're gonna use these three bolts. We're gonna come from behind, make sure that our holes are lined up and go ahead and get them started. And then we'll do the same thing out here with our factory hardware that go through these holes. Then make sure that the plug that comes off the solenoid is in between the bracket and the firewall facing up. That way you can make your connection later. So we'll just install them to every hole. And on these back ones, we'll just kind of have to feel around. That's why we went ahead and started this one. So we know it should be pretty much lined up. And again, you may have to kind of move it around just to get it to line up properly. So next we're gonna remove our center tray here. We'll just remove it and we'll go ahead and set this aside. Then we'll want to go ahead and take our grommet and install it into our hole that we previously drilled, the inch and three quarter hole. Just slide right in. So we're going to go ahead and start feeding our wires to where they need to be. We don't have to necessarily hook them up just yet. We are going to feed them through. We'll feed them through. That way we can kind of gauge where they need to be. We'll just kind of let them hang there. And then right here on the top, you're gonna to see we have two red caps. We'll go ahead and remove those. And these fittings are included in the kit. One side will have an O-ring, that's the side that needs to thread into the pump. We want to tighten these up to the point of where it lines up facing that way. So line it up this way, and then you have this little nut that will secure it. Just want to go ahead and tighten that down. So when you start, just make sure that's backed off a little bit. Again, we'll just get on it here. Get it cranked into position. Where it's running out straight. Take our nut. Snug it down. Make sure both of these are good and tight. Make sure both of them are pointing out this way. Then, while we're at it, while we're right here, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory hardware that secures this lower portion to the plastic on the machine. So just kind of push it back, get one lined up. You may have to push on it pretty good, but it will bend in the, in the place. No big deal there. We can just go ahead and tighten these back up. So next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our hoses. We're gonna start feeding them through our grommet. Feed them through one at a time. And we're gonna route them right along our intake tubes. So I like to get one started back that way just to give us some more room. Then we'll take our other hose and we're gonna route these together all the way back to the cylinder. 
So we'll get them fed back as far as we can, just like this. And then we're gonna head back to the back of the machine, flip the bed up, and start feeding them the rest of the way through. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our hoses and pull them the rest of the way back and just continue feeding them towards the rear. And we're just gonna feed them right down in between the frame and the sway bar down to where they will touch the cylinder. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach them to the cylinder. Just make sure you get them started on there nice and straight. Then fully tighten. So next we're gonna get our controller holder here. We're gonna install it just like this in between the two cup holders. Now in the kit we send some 3M double-sided tape. What you're gonna to wanna to do is lay it up on here, figure out how long of a piece you need, and then cut a piece just like we did. We'll just peel one side off, stick it to the bracket, and then peel off the backing to the 3M double-sided tape. And we'll firmly stick it right here to your center cup holder. So next we're gonna be connecting our kit to the battery. So we're gonna remove our studs off of our hot as well as our ground. So obviously the red is your hot, your positive side of the battery. So we'll go ahead, get our red wire attached, and then over here, the negative or black side, we will attach our wire as well. Go ahead and reinstall the nuts. Make sure that we fully tighten them. Then we're gonna grab our controller out of our kit. We can go ahead and hang it off of our holder. It's magnetic. And we can come down here to where we slid our plug in between the bracketry and the motor. We'll just go ahead and plug it right in. And then just to check to make sure our kit's functioning properly, our motor's working. Obviously we don't wanna run it yet because there's no fluid in it. So next, what we're gonna be doing is heading back to the rear and we're gonna show you how to center your cylinder. So for this next step, you're gonna install one wheel and tire. And you're gonna rotate it all the way one way to where the cylinder is maxed out. And then you're gonna get a tape measure or a measuring scale. And you're gonna measure from the face of the cylinder to the face of the inner ball and socket. Whatever your measurement may be, you're gonna divide that by two and that's what you're gonna set your cylinder to. Once you have your cylinder centered, you're gonna to wanna to set your tie rods as close as you can to get your toe as straight as you can before we set it down on the ground. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hook our lines up to our pump. So make sure we get them good and started straight, just like the rear. Then once you have your lines started, go ahead and fully tighten them. Make sure you get them good and tight. Just make sure you double check them. You don't want any leaks. Then what we're gonna do is pull a little slack. That way we have a little bit of room here. We're gonna go to where this red cap is on the top of the reservoir here. And we'll just go ahead and remove this cap completely. And we'll find a funnel that fits inside of it. Just like this one right here. And we're gonna go ahead and fill the reservoir. Now today, we're just using some house brand Mercron automatic transmission fluid. I like to just go ahead and get a gallon. It's easier that way. It doesn't cost you too much. And then we'll just start filling it. Then once we get it to the max fill line, we're just gonna start actuating the pump. So we'll just want to keep running the pump until it gets down to about half full. Then we'll just keep filling it back up to full and we'll just keep actuating that pump until we bleed all of the air out of the lines. Now it will self bleed and you want to be sure that you get all of the air out of the lines otherwise you're going to have some issues. So we're just going to keep actuating it. Next we're going to grab a reducer. 
We're going to go ahead and install it where the red cap was. Just want to get it hand tight and then we'll fully tighten it with a wrench. So then we're going to grab our vent line. We're going to go up here as high as we can on our cage. So right here behind your rear crossbar. Start feeding it down. I like to go back and behind the seat belt. Now obviously if you're running a snorkel setup or anything like that, you could absolutely run it to that. You just want to make sure you get it up as high as you possibly can. So we'll run it right down through here and then attach it. So then we'll just go through and just zip tie it all the way up and down through here. Now like I said, everybody's going to run theirs a little bit differently. We don't have a snorkel set up on this machine, so we're just going to run it up as high as we can, cut off the excess, and make sure it's secured to the cage. So once you have your tube routed and tied up how you want, you want to make sure that you throw a zip tie around your tube here to your reducer. Once you've done that, just go ahead and cut off the excess, tuck your hose back into place, and then we'll want to make sure that we tie all our hydraulic hoses up in a good spot where they're not around any moving components or anything that's going to have a lot of excessive heat on it. So at this point, you're going to want to go through, reinstall any factory components you've removed, make sure all your hardware is fully tightened, tie up any wiring. Again, make sure that your hydraulic hoses aren't anywhere where they're going to get pinched, they're around anything that's going to get hot or anything of that nature. Take a measurement from the center line of the driver's side tire on the rear as well as the passenger side tire then do the same thing for the front of the tires and make sure your measurements are the same. And there you have it. That's all it takes to install Super ATV's ride system. For more information on this or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.